Hey everyone, welcome to Particles in Motion Part 2. Today we're going to be determining where a particle changes direction. Okay, so we're going to need a couple things to help us out. Okay, now we know that a particle changes direction if x prime of t equals 0 and a of t does not equal zero. So we're actually going to be using the first and second derivative to help us out here. Okay, so first we need the first derivative. So our position function is given by t cubed minus 12 t squared plus 36 t plus 18. t is greater than zero and we want to know when this particle changes direction. This is when a particle changes direction. That's what we know. So let's find x prime of t. And I do that, I get 3t squared minus 24t plus 36 plus, well, that's it. No 18. 18 is gone, okay? So I've got the first derivative. It wants me to set that equal to 0, so I'm going to do that. Now, I can factor out the 3 and clean this up a bit, so I get t squared minus 8t plus 12. I can continue to factor, and I get 3 times t minus 6t minus 2. Two numbers that multiply to be 12 add to be negative 8. So t equals 6, t equals 2. That's when my velocity is 0. So that matches the domain. They're both greater than 0, so I'm okay. Now I have to look at, well, gee, when is the acceleration equal to 0? Because if we want the particle to change direction, we need a of t not to equal 0. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line here. And x double prime of t is going to be equal to 6t minus 24. So that's not too bad. Okay, so what makes the acceleration equal to 0? Well, that's 4. Now, the acceleration is equal to 0 at 4, which is none of these two values. So in conclusion, the particle changes direction at t equals 2 and t equals 6, both of them. Because the only spot where the acceleration is 0 is at t equals 4. So look, when the velocity is 0 and a of t is something other than 0, you're changing direction. The only thing we had to worry about is at t equals 4. So both the particle's changing direction at both those, time, both those times. So if you have any questions or comments of figuring out when a particle changes direction, go ahead and type them below. We'll see you next time.